Hey there guys! So, I feel like it's been a really long time since I've actually filmed a video. And I apologize if you hear any noise, that's my family downstairs. But, I was watching through some sketchbook tours today. And I realized a lot of people talk about their AP Studio Art sketchbooks. Um, which I took that class last year. And I just graduated this year. Um, about a few weeks ago I graduated. But on my AP Studio Art portfolio, I actually achieved a five, which if you don't know how it works, it's on a grading scale of one through six, six being like absolutely perfect portfolio. So for me to get a five was <laughs> quite surprising because I don't do hyper-realism. And so I wanted to make this video to kind of discuss how you can achieve a five or a very high rating on your AP Studio Art portfolio without having to be a realistic artist because, you know, not all of us can be. Uh, realism is a very difficult thing, not, not for me especially, I mean, it's, it's very difficult. So, you know, it's not something I particularly like either, but I was very surprised that my style, which is much more cartoony, still achieved a very, very high rating. So let's get into that. So AP Studio Art is actually uh, separated into three different categories. There's 3D, 2D, which would be, you know, 3D pottery, 2D photography, and drawing, which I was in the drawing category. And within that, um, within those categories, it's separated into two different things. So first semester in theory, you're going to have 12 pieces of what is called breath. And the breath is, it's, it's no really to really explain it other than it's just kind of your art. You can make what you want. It doesn't have to follow specific rules. In my case, my teacher had us do, you know, one thing she'd set aside for us one week, like a prompt, and then we'd have a free prompt week. And that, I don't know, it was a little bit more structured for me. I don't know if everyone works like that, but your first semester for me, it was this stuff, is your breath. And that's 12 pieces. And then your second semester is going to, and your second semester is going to be what's called concentration. And it doesn't have to particularly go in this order. Some people do. Some people, some like some schools have concentration first and then breath. But at my school, at least, we had breath and then concentration. And concentration, you get one sole theme and all of your pieces, all of your next 12 pieces of that semester are going to revolve around that theme. And for me, I chose the theme um, putting like a physical attribute on mental illness and phobias. It was just something I thought would be cool, and it ended up working obviously well. And I was really proud of how that looked. So I'll go through my breath pieces first. I don't know the exact order that my pieces went in, but I do remember the first and the last. So this is my first piece, and looking just looking at my first piece and my very, very last piece of my concentration, you can already see that there was a big, big improvement. And that's one of the biggest things about AP Studio Art, is that regardless of your artwork, 24 pieces, making a piece a week, you will improve drastically. You will see your improvements through all of the ways you draw, through your anatomy, through your reference, everything will improve. And it, you know, it definitely did for me, because you really do have to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. In my case, I had to go from drawing floating figures to having a ground-to-figure relationship because that's what my teacher thought I would be successful with. And you see a lot more of that in my concentration pieces. In fact, all of my concentration pieces I tried to focus some sort of ground-figure relationship to. And that became a very important aspect for me to personally follow. And I do believe that really did help me achieve my high score. So this first piece, um, just for breath, it was done in watercolor not particularly my favorites. I, I did like the position and I did like that that has a personal meaning for me, but I mean, not my best work. It was, it was decent. I, uh, through my breath, I dabbled a lot with different, uh, mediums. So I did watercolor. This one's acrylic. It's of my character, Masca. Um, I personally like how this turned out and I'm not, not big on acrylics. I only did acrylics twice. And this was my second acrylics attempt. It was actually a redraw of a piece I'd done in a sketchbook. Let's see if it'll focus. And I think it was, I think it 
it turned out pretty well. I did try to avoid shading just because I was not good at shading. But, I mean, this one didn't achieve a very good score in class. Uh, simply because I really, you can tell, I'm, I'm not the best with acrylics. But I do like how this piece turned out. Then I have some digital pieces. So for me, I'm both a traditional and a digital art uh, person. <laughs> digital artist. And I've tried to focus a lot more on my traditional art as opposed to my digital art. Because at this point, I was heavily into digital art. But I wanted the AP gods, as we call them, to see that I had promise in traditional art as well. So for this piece, it was just a reference, and I decided I wanted to try a realistic headshot. I did want to include some realism. Um, I'm better at digital realism than I am at traditional realism. So I have that piece. This one is kind of a mixture of a realistic kind of painting style that I was trying at the time, but combined with my cartoon uh, style. And, you know, I do have some nudity within these portraits, and within AP, it is okay to include nudity as long as there is no penetration. And I know that sounds, you know, ew, gross, but it's reality, you know? That's the rules of AP, and that's perfectly fine. Like, I would never draw anything like that, but figure nudity for art is perfectly okay. Here's another digital piece as well. Um, this one didn't like it that much. This was kind of rushed on my part. And I do feel like a lot of these pieces were. This one was kind of like a follow-up for that acrylic piece. And again, I'm really not sure how I felt. I just tried something with um, comic style. Because I'd never really tried a comic style. Here's another one done with a, as a character of mine. And I mean, you can see here I'm starting to develop my style more and more throughout here. At this point, I wasn't perfectly fine with my style. I really, there was still a lot I wanted for it, but I wasn't really sure how to get there. And so I remember being very infuriated with a lot of these pieces. Uh, I did spend a lot of time just moping, a lot of pieces thrown away, a lot of angry tears <laughs> in the dark room uh, for photography, but in the end it paid off. This piece was my first uh, marker portrait of my breath and I would go on to use my Copics and my other markers alcohol-based inks for my all my concentration pieces as long as well as um digital this one was more of a self-portrait uh, a little bit of a personal piece and it's fairly big as well I think it's one of my bigger pieces that I created um, this one was another kind of self-portrait. I labeled it balance and it was kind of me balancing all the aspects of my life and it was done in Prismacolor colored pencil which I still really do like using. Do love how the heart and the skull turn out here. This one was also done in Prismacolor colored pencil. Uh, I just wanted some hand practice so I kind of created this little character and named him Reaper and he actually shows up within maybe two or three more pieces throughout the year. He became kind of a symbol of mine through my pieces and I ended up really liking how I drew him and how he had no eyes or nose for me to have to mess around with so it made my life easier. And this was the last piece of my breath and I decided as the last piece of the breath I wanted to have a piece that kind of ties into my con concentration. So I did schizophrenia and at first, I had this concept that all my concentration pieces would be in like a frame, so you're looking through like a mirror or a portrait, but that worked for all of one piece. Uh, that idea was kind of abandoned fairly quickly on. Now, I do really like how this piece looks, and it was obviously done in alcohol-based inks. Uh, this actually changed because my marker died most of the way through this, but I, I really do like how this looks, and it does give a good air on what the next uh, concept is going to be, which is my concentration. But before I get there, I wanted to show some, uh, some tips. So one of my biggest things was that I learned later on that just a really great idea is to do, um, I don't even remember what I called them, like pocket sketches. So do, do tiny, tiny little concept sketches of what you want to do and it made my life so much easier because this concept sketch became one of my favorite pieces 
it just, you know, you have this concept in your mind a lot of times and you can't entirely put it to paper. But looking at a tiny sketch, you know exactly what you want to do. This one, as you can tell, was the original sketch of my first piece, which at first I did all this and I was like, I want to watercolor it, but this isn't the right paper. So I had to light box it. And we had this day in class that was not really worth anything other than just a class grade, but we just did line, um, single line drawings and I decided I was going to mess around. I did some Sharpie, some watercolor, some marker, which I love that little doodle right there, uh, more watercolor there and some more marker with a skull that we had. And, you know, just these little days of just practicing and just doodles in class were so helpful in the end when I wanted to just sit down and draw something. I couldn't think of anything, so I'd just do these, you know, like, 10-minute doodles, and it helped so much to visualize how I was going to get all this work done. Because walking into your AP class, you're thinking 24 pieces is an absolutely absurd amount, but it's so much more achievable than you think. Looking at my concentration pieces... I definitely can say I have some of my all-time favorite works in this um, arrangement. Uh, I just put so much effort into these, and I do believe I actually had a live stream with that I was working on this one. And as you can see, this is once again that Reaper character. So this first one is called Nosocomophobia, which is fear of hospitals. And right away, you know, I started with a simple background because I'd never done backgrounds before, and I decided if I was gonna dive in, I didn't want to start with something that I only had an image of and couldn't actually put to paper. So I did something simple. I did a stretcher, I did some jars, and just a background that looks like kind of a hospital, you know, like brick walls. I do love how the metal work looks there. And once again, this is alcohol-based inks, my Copic Spectrum Noirs and such. My piece after that, uh, I decided to go some digital, and this is also another one of my favorite pieces. I decided I'd keep trying with my realistic paintings, but still, you know, keeping my cartoony style. So this one's aviophobia. It's fear of flying. I remember being so, so happy over this piece, like absolutely ecstatic with how it turned out because, you know, I'd had this concept in my brain and for once in my life, it finally turned out exactly how I thought it would. And you know, that didn't, that didn't happen with all my pieces, but I was very, very proud of this one, and it helped me realize that I shouldn't be putting out pieces that I'm not absolutely proud of. And in the end, you know, you run out of time, so you don't really have the choice to decide to go back and redo pieces, but I, I should have at least put more effort into some of the pieces that I didn't feel as strong about. This, this is one of them that I didn't feel so strong about. I tried some stuff on it and it didn't entirely work out. I do like this whole idea, but the background, I just kind of went lazy on it. I tried to do some like windowsill thing and it just didn't turn out how I anticipated, which was upsetting for me. But in the end, I still did like uh, quite a few parts of it. And I did go back and touch up some of the things in here. So I'm definitely not going to say this was a failure. I don't think any of my pieces were a failure, but, you know, I just wasn't proud of all of them. This is probably one of the ones that I honestly liked the least. The The marker job was quite splotchy, and this one was, was very rushed. I do love the hands on it. It's hafiophobia, which is fear of being touched. But I just... This, this, this one, I have strong dislike feelings towards it. Um, this one's bipolar, and it's also one of my favorites. I'm telling you, these are some of my favorites. It's got the whole aspect of feeling you're on top of the world and then feeling like you're drowning underwater. <clears throat> Simple and very different from all the others, but I do like how it stands out in my portfolio. This one you saw in the concept sketches. Uh, arachnophobia, fear of spiders. And... It was definitely one of my greater pieces. This one took a very, very long time from lining it with every teeny tiny little spider to coloring the rocks and every tiny spider. And probably the most 
tedious part of it was the white gel pen web in the back with the word arachnophobia. But at first I had considered, I was like, do I want to do the white gel pen? But it honestly just tied the entire piece together, I believe. So I'm definitely proud of that. And you can see, you know, my, my ground to figure relationships, my backgrounds are becoming more, more difficult as I continue. They're becoming a little bit you know, more uh, in-depth and detailed. This one wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, again, it was rushed, but I do do like the shading on it. So it's dissociative disorder. It's kind of hard to see because of the glare. This one, I wish I'd put more effort into the background, but I was so tired of coloring the figure that I really just kind of did the background half as good as I could have. But I did love the figure, and it's philophobia, which is fear of falling and of never finding love. This one, honestly, I, I was very proud of this one. I didn't really like how the figure turned out, but the concept of him looking in the mirror was so hard to do when I had to draw two figures. But I was very proud of it in the end, and it's hypochondriasis, which is uh, fear of being sick or like fear of illnesses kind of thing. People who think you know, they're always sick. So, you know, on this side you see him, he's clear, but over here he's obviously very ill. I'm down to, I think, my last three. This one is misophobia, which is fear of being dirty, I believe it was. So we've got a guy in a bubble and, you know, I did use a lot of reference photos for these pieces. I honestly would not have been able to do it without reference photos. And as you can see, even when I don't have entire backgrounds, I still try to include some kind of foreground of sorts, even if it's just shading, just to show that the figures are there. <clears throat> Down to my last two pieces, I definitely loved them. I just loved the pose of this one, uh, trip uh, trypanophobia, which is fear of needles. So I kind of took a ragdoll approach, and I really do love the, f the pose. I kind of made it almost like mummy-ish in the needle and just everything about this one I think was very, very successful. And my last piece has to be my favorite piece. Once again, I used the Reaper character. Uh, this time I went full out with the background and I'd actually been planning a circusy themed piece with the Reaper since the beginning of this semester. So I was so happy to be able to throw my last piece out and achieve it at this high of a level and have a background that I was so, so proud of. So it's thanatophobia, which is fear of death. So I only found it fitting that we had the Reaper and that this is the last piece and it ties it all in. So we've got circus tents, we've got the heaven and we've got hell and we've got, you know, um, little tombstones and he's out on the field. He's got his skull scepter and he's just dressed like a ringmaster and everything about this piece, the wording, the banner, just absolutely obsessed with this piece. Um, his clothes and the pose and the hands. I, I really do love this piece. And the happiness that came with ending on a note that I appreciated my work was absolutely amazing, you know? And despite the amount of stress that I went through throughout the entire year to put out 24 pieces, and despite how many times I fell behind and I felt like the world was actually ending, <laughs> it was all worth it in the end because I, I did achieve a five and I want people to be aware that to get a five, you don't have to have realistic work. You know, you see all these people on YouTube with the realism and they get these really high scores and you think, how am I ever going to achieve that? But you can have your own style and still get a five. And it's so important to remember that, you know, you do want to push yourself um, when you're in AP because that's only going to make your work better and it's going to get you a higher grade. But you can't push yourself so far out of your comfort zone that you don't even like what you're putting out. And I did really struggle with that concept because there were times where I thought this, there's no way I'm going to do well. There's no way that this piece is even good enough to put out. And I felt so self-conscious and vulnerable about my work. But in the end, it truthfully really did pay off you know take the tips from your teachers ask people for constructive criticism yeah it's okay to get upset about it but you know you still have to keep in mind that 
you're not, you know, you're not the one grading your work. It's from someone else's point of view. So it's better to get those other people's point of views as well. But at the end, it does come down to you. You know, if you like the piece, put it out. If you don't like the piece, take it back, fix it up until you think it's appropriate and you put it back out there. And if you need to change it, then you take it back. You just, it's, it's a repetitive motion of deciding when your work is good and when, you know, it's underworked or it's overworked. And it's a fine line, but you will figure it out. And in the end, that is what will get you a good AP score. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, I kind of wish I'd had a video like this when I did my AP portfolio. But yeah, I mean, I just, I really thought it would be important because I have a lot of my friends who are going into AP next year and they're always asking me for tips. So I thought maybe I'd just make a video so that I could just send it to them when they need it. I know this is a very long video, 21 minutes, but, um, you know, if you do watch it through, I do hope it helps. So thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.